D-Ray on the NBA, as we affectionately like to call it, here on the Sports Bash. Daryl Reynolds, a member of the 2016 national champion Villanova Wildcats, the co-host of the Processed Podcast on the Sixers in the NBA. As uh, we got a lot of Sixers and NBA stuff we want to dive into as we are about a month away from the return of the NBA. But I want to get D-Ray's thoughts on this out of the gates here. As all the teams are starting to do testing because the players are returning to get ready for camp, D-Ray, and we are seeing numbers spiking now. If you're a player and you see that, do you have some trepidation and concern about what you are seeing? Uh, first of all, Mike, and be honest, I've never heard the word trepidation, and your vocabulary is amazing. Very <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you went to I Villanova. Was... <laughs> I went to West Virginia. Come on. I was a comp major, man. But, um, but no, no, no. I, I definitely think there's moment for pause on it. I definitely think there's a, well, all right, let's think about this. But I love that they're doing it now because, you know, we all know the, the general – timeline for quarantine in two weeks. We heard about what happened with Jokic and him staying out there for another two weeks to kind of let it pass through his system. He's asymptomatic right now, thank God. But I, I like that they're being proactive as far as testing right now as opposed to them starting camp or even worse, getting down to Disney World. And then they start testing and now we got to push back the season another two weeks. So we knew this thing was still around, but I, I'm kind of happy they're getting ahead of the curve. Yeah, it is good that they're getting ahead of uh, ahead of the curve. And you mentioned, uh, you know, Jokic. I mean, he's a high, high profile player. I mean, he is one of the highest profile players uh, that you can, you know, get. Uh, it's just concerning that you know you're starting to see a little by little. Um, is there a concern about you know? Yesterday we were talking to Keith Smith, who uh, is down in Orlando. He covers the NBA, and he was talking about the fact that the workers are not going to be quarantined. In other words, if you work at Disney World, like you work at the hotel or you work at the uh, facilities where these players are going to be living, uh, is there some concern about having to trust what they're doing? Absolutely. Uh, Part of me wants to say no. I understand that the NBA is going to test everybody's temperature every day they come in to make sure they're good, but these people can be asymptomatic, and that's how you have an outbreak. I, I think that's a very bad idea, to be honest with you. You know, like, you know, me and Bruce talked about this on process. Like, it's so it's low key. Like, the workers should just stay. They should be quarantined as well because all it takes is one person to get out. They contract it. They come back. They give it to three people. Those three people give it to three people. And it's up with a trainer. And next, you know, a player has it. They go on the court. They give it to the other nine people. That's how it spreads. So no, I, I got to be honest. They are dealing with that terribly. I don't think the workers should leave at all. What are your thoughts on the whole Avery Bradley situation with the Lakers? I mean, here's a guy who is a big-time role player for that squad, and they have a really good chance of winning the entire title, and now he's not going to go because he wants to make sure that his family is healthy, which is totally respectful. But, you know, it, it, it's just it's the first time we are seeing someone on a competitive team that actually has a chance to win the title. So what are your thoughts on Avery Bradley? I think Avery Bradley's decision is going to be a domino effect. I think for guys who were kind of on the fence are going to now start to say uh, that they're not exactly comfortable doing it. And I think it's going to end up, by the time we get to the regular season, it's going to end up being a lot of guys from the G League filling in those uh, spots. Because like we said before, not everybody is exactly comfortable with this. And if your family is your real concern, it's, you're not going to choose basketball over them. And a lot of players feel like that, you know, from what I understand. So. It's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Like, they have the choice. You know, thank God they have the choice. You know what I mean? Yep, and there's uh, no question that, uh, it, it, like, we talked a week ago, and it sounded like how, um, you know, it seemed like there was so much optimism. And I think that the NBA, tell me if you agree with this or not, they have the best situation. I mean, the fact that Disney World – can have all the teams there. They have these three arenas. What we were told yesterday is that there's going to be three games a day in each of the three arenas. So you're going to get like a game around like 2 o'clock, another game. Uh, After that game's over, they're going to disinfect the the court and the arena for two and a half hours before the next game. And that next game would be, say, around 6. And then they would disinfect the, the arena and the court again for another two and a half hours. And then they would play another game around 10 o'clock at night so that the West Coast people can get a game around 7. So it seems that this is the best possible scenario. But Daryl Reynolds, Malcolm Jenkins said today 
that football is non-essential and that he wouldn't feel safe until the risk is eliminated, is that the mindset that these sports leagues should have? Or do you think that it's at least worth trying to go back and play uh, just to have some sort of normalcy? I think for football, it's so much different because you're dealing with so many different moving pieces. So I absolutely understand football saying that they're not comfortable with it. I hope that everybody would play, but I can't act like they're crazy for having concerns about it. And the risk is not over. You know, a lot of guys don't know. A lot of guys aren't buying the rhetoric that just this is the flu or something that's going to pass. A lot of people aren't comfortable with that. So I think their concerns are absolutely valid. Do I think that should stop the NFL? Not at all. Because the NBA, with the money they have and the resources they have, can find a way to make sure that they can, you know, knock off so many ways of people contracting COVID-19. The NFL can do the same thing. They have the resources. They have the money. It's just a matter of figuring it out. And I think they can, but it's a matter of do they want to. Because it's going to cost. You know what I mean? I kind of want to get into the Sixers a little bit. And um, Ben Simmons was actually posted up online with LeBron James. And coming from a former player like yourself, I just want to get your thoughts and opinions on, you know, how important do you think that is for the growth of Ben Simmons to be constantly working with LeBron James? I mean, how much could he really pick up on when it comes to LeBron? I love it. I I love I think it is very important. I think it's one of the things that truly separates people. You know, when Kobe passed, you heard a million times how Michael Jordan would say um, during his eulogy that Kobe would text him at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Not just about basketball advice, but life advice. Like, these guys are looked at as these older brothers now. They're looked at as the guys who are going to kind of pass the torch to the Ben Simmons and the Joel and Bees, the next guys up. We saw a couple weeks ago when he was with Dwayne Wade in the same situation. But those guys have won championships. They know what it takes to get there. They know what it takes to stay there. So learning from guys like that is always better than learning from your peers. It's like us and adults when we were younger. You know what I mean? We were teenagers. Like, we think we had everything figured out, but you want to listen to somebody a little bit older just so you can kind of show you, like, all right, I've been here. I've done this. And this is how you navigate through this. You add that on top of their natural raw talent at the bench, like a player like Ben Simmons has, with the guidance of a LeBron James and – I feel like that's what it's going to take to get some rings coming down on Broad Street. Now, let me ask you this. I mean, um, the fact that these players, they ended in March, April, March, April, May, June, July, um, that's almost like a full offseason worth of working out. There's a good possibility to finish the season that they never finished that you're going to see guys making younger players, making big strides and improvement, right? I mean, a guy like Ben Simmons can come back I don't want to say a completely different player, but there's a lot of time that he could have built himself into a different player than the one we saw last time in March. Very much so. And I got to be honest, Gil, I don't think it's too ambitious to say a completely different player. At this time, it's great for these guys to reflect and kind of not only look at film, but look at their game and look at where they want to end up in this, in this game as a whole. I'm pretty sure Ben Simmons, Joe and B uh, in particular, had a lot of time to sit back and it's like, all right, where am I? Where do I want to be? And how do I get there? And like I said, surrounding yourself with LeBron James or Dwayne Wade, but also putting in the work that they appear to be putting in is the stuff that's ultimately going to separate them. So we might see that quantum leap in their game just because of how much maturation, you know, it takes place over this time. But I, I think it's great. I think it's, it's such a, it's like an off season. It isn't one, you know what I mean? Because they know they're getting back, and it's just they had to stay on their toes. Unlike off season, where you know you can kind of slack off and stuff. You know, Joe B said he's working out six times a day. You got to stay on your toes because you don't know when it's going to come back. So, I don't think it's too ambitious at all to say that we might see completely different players in the right direction from now. Do you think that Brett Brown is coaching for his job? Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I will go as far to say that, you know, there's pressure on Ben Simmons to not become a bust. There's pressure on John B to see if he can actually show up when his team needs them. The beauty uh, and kind of the ugliness of where the Sixers are is there's a ton of pressure. But in moments like these, like, you see some great things happen. You know what I mean? We all think back on 2012 and 13 when the Heat, they were back against the wall against the Celtics again. You know what I mean? They're in a situation where, all right, if you guys don't do it now, they might break up this quote-unquote super team. And look what they did that season. Sometimes that pressure, actually a lot of times, that pressure is exactly what younger players need to kind of get over that hump. Uh, Daryl Reynolds, let's finish up with this. How do, what is your opinion of Shake Milton, and how do you see a pairing of Milton and Simmons? Does that work? 
Absolutely. First of all, I think Shake is the, the baddest name ever. That is like the illest nickname ever. <laughs> but uh, but no, no, no. I, I love his game. I, I love his game. But also, just as you can tell, the way he carries himself as a player, he's humble. He, he doesn't do anything that, you know, is out of his character. He's not going to go out there and go crazy. But he can shoot the ball. He, he's very good at it. He locates and kind of moving without the ball. I think that's perfect for a player like Ben Simmons who can get the guys the ball so much. But you can't do that if you're playing still, you're stagnant. And as the shooter, who has that ability to just get into open spots at, at will, it's, it's something that's going to carry him throughout his career, but definitely carry him while he's playing with Ben Simmons. Uh, obviously, we're looking forward to the start of the NBA season. Daryl Reynolds, of course, you can follow him at Dre, the director, on Twitter for more on the NBA. Check out the Processed Podcast. And those guys will be talking more on the Sixers as we get ready. And we'll be keeping our eye on that. And, of course, the NBA with D-Ray every week right here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. All right, D-Ray, appreciate it, man. All right, fellas, talk to you later. Yep, and he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.